Hello everyone, it's Megan. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my channel if this is your first time here. Today's video is a very special interview. I had the pleasure of speaking with Jonathan and Nika, both of whom are on the board of Between the Veils, a new pagan nonprofit that plans on running events, just recently held an online conference, and also plans on holding their first live convention in February. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy this interview. So thank you so much for joining me today um, here around the cauldron. Um, I have two very special guests. I have Jonathan and Nika from Between the Veils. Hello. Hi. Hey. Thanks for having us. Awesome. Of course. So would you mind doing an introduction, um, telling everybody a little bit about yourselves, and then we can talk about what you're doing with Between the Veils. Absolutely. So my name is Jonathan Quant. I am the president of the Between the Veils board, and I am a Thelemite and ceremonial magician with some history in Wicca, with uh, a background in um, studying diaspora, African traditional religious traditions, like hoodoo and ancestral magic and work. Awesome. And like I said before, my name is Nika, and I am the secretary of the Between the Veils board. Um, and I am an eclectic polytheist. Um, I also practice um, uh, traditional folk Persian um, magic and practices and spirituality, um, specifically from the Khuzestan province. Um, and I am a Hakatian high priestess. Um, yeah, I'm just very excited to be here. Awesome. Um, so I'm already familiar with what Between the Veils is. Will you please let everybody else know what Between the Veils is? Because I'm, I'm excited for this and I was super excited to come across your content and your conference. Yeah, um, so Between the Veils is a conference that has been in the works, particularly around the last two years of Pantheacon, which was another conference that was going on in San, San Jose um, annually, an annual pagan conference, which was a lot of fun and it was great. And there were quite a few folks who were noticing that there were some people who were being left out and some folks, particularly marginalized people, um, people of color, queer and trans folks were being left out of the conversation and the programming and in the leadership roles. And so we, so a number of folks got together and said, let's start a conference that really centers those voices, that really lifts up the traditions of people of color, of queer and trans folks in magical spaces and traditions. And that really focuses on consent and how we interact with one another, how we consent to being in ritual spaces with one another, and particularly has conversations about cultural appropriation. Yeah. That's, Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan's got it down. Awesome. Um, one of the... One thing that I really want to stress is that we believe, I believe that Between the Veils is a community run organization. We're here to serve the community, mm -hmm. whereas um, we're not trying to make a whole lot of money off of Between the Veils. We are doing this to, um, to serve one another, to be with one another in community, to learn with and from one another um, at all times. Awesome. That's something that I really like too, because sometimes with different events and stuff, you're like, well, what's, you know, what's the purpose behind it? Yeah, it looks like community, but is that really the entire purpose? So is Between the Veils um, a nonprofit? Like legally, is it already, does it have nonprofit status? Yeah. So we are um, legally and officially a 501c3 awesome. um, and have our, our nonprofit status. Um, which is really exciting for us and um, was a lot of the, the beginning days of what we were doing. I think um, maybe some folks who don't know our history or don't know um, very much about us, we both were trying to um, create a event 
um, and a con while simultaneously also building a new pro- a new nonprofit. Um, so yeah, we're we're very excited to have that kind of uh, logistical step <laughs> checked off of our list. Do not recommend <laughs> starting a nonprofit for anyone. Well, maybe not yeah. while you're also trying to plan <laughs> your first con during COVID. <laughs> That's funny because it's something that I've looked into um, before I uh, came across Between the Veils. Um, I've even talked about like, what would it take to start a nonprofit and have like a community centered thing? And then I'm like, oh, that's a lot. And I already have a lot on my plate. I think I'm going to let somebody else handle it. (laughs) Yeah. Finding somebody who can, who knows all of that stuff, knows how to like fill out all the paperwork. It's, it's so much paperwork. Yeah. How I can imagine. (laughs) Yeah. It's a lot of work, but you know, it's a labor of love and it's a labor of care that Mm -hmm. we, we wanted to do for our community and for, for our people. Yeah. And I really like on your website, you have, um, I forget what it's labeled as because brain, um, but you go through and, and you detail the ideas of inclusivity and everything that you really want to encompass with the conference and with the nonprofit. Do you plan on doing any other um, work, I guess, outside of the conferences? I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever asked you that question before. <laughs> uh, yeah, we plan on, we plan on hosting a, a whole bunch of different kind of events. Um, our, our driving force is education. We want mm-hmm. to not only teach the general public about paganism and magic and witchcraft, we also want to teach each other about paganism, magic and witchcraft and how we can gain our own skills, become better magicians, better psychics. Mm-hmm. Um, we we want to host uh, monthly online workshops. Um, maybe we can, uh, with like a track in mind, and we want to, um, and so we have the conference, we want to hold fundraisers, balls. Um, one of our, our, our treasurer is really interested in holding like a pagan ball kind of thing. Mm-hmm where we can like do masquerade and I, I don't know. I've never been to a ball. Oh my yeah. God. You know more about that than <laughs> yeah, I do. No, so, <laughs> so yes, we do have a few things coming up. Um, as Jonathan said, um, we're going to be starting um, monthly workshops actually, hopefully um, by the end of July. Um, so those will be online um, <clears throat> workshops with, you know, promoting either a single or maybe two um, presenters um, at a time. Um, we're going to be doing uh, a few events um, uh, before uh, February, which is when we will be hosting our first in-person con. Um, as Jonathan said, um, hopefully a December kind of Yule Ball little get together, um, which will be uh, in California in the Bay Area uh, for right now. Um, also, um, hopefully some art and crafts kind of um get togethers with folks so people can share poetry and their magic through that. Um, And then also potentially some sex positive um, kinky events as well um, Mm -hmm. for people. Uh, Unfortunately, again, just because of how new we are and where we're getting started, most of those will be in California and primarily in the Bay Area. Our goal is eventually, um, and this will be after, um, for sure, after our first con, um, to start also hosting satellite events um, throughout the country, especially for some of the East Coasters um, that feel like they can't they can't participate um, in person with us here right now. Um, our plan is to kind of expand outside of um, Northern California. It makes me really sad that I'm not in California to go to one of those balls. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you'll certainly be invited, and especially to our first in-person conference in February. Oh, I can't wait. Um, so then I have another question, because you said um, satellite events. Now, would that be kind of like um, you have the in-person event, and then it's also like broadcast online for anybody outside? Or do you mean like like you're going to travel for your events? Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, 
the yes to both um, in that we're, our primary con will always be um, in person. At, I shouldn't say always. As of right now, for the next few years and foreseeable future, our kind of big primary con in February will be in California, um, in the Bay Area, in San Jose, most likely. Um, and um, we will try to do uh, broadcasting from that so people can watch from afar for two reasons. Um, one of which is actually the the online con that we just had. We had a lot of international presenters mm -hmm. um, that for different reasons might have a challenging time um, getting to the U.S. And so we definitely want to still continue to be able to have um, presenters from lots of different backgrounds kind of zoom into us. Mm -hmm. um, and then also for both for accessibility reasons um, on a myriad of fronts, we've gotten feedback that it would be really helpful to also continue to broadcast um, for folks. So we're gonna try and make that happen. We think it's possible, um, but we have to work with the hotel to make sure. Mm -hmm. um, and then dually, we have folks that um, are involved in BTV, either in advisory roles, um, well, primarily in advisory roles that are in other parts of the United States um, that would want to kind of potentially host smaller, again, little satellite events in other parts of the country. So not quite as big as our con. Um, and it would be um, hopefully being able to grow to have little hubs in different places that would be able to put on um, their own events, but still as a part of BTV and kind of with the support of the organization. That would be amazing. Because uh, I've talked about uh, the con in my Discord server, and I've got a lot of East Coasters in my Discord server, and um, everybody loves the idea of what you're doing and the inclusivity and the safety and the environment that you're creating. But a lot of us are like, but it's way over there. <laughs> and yeah. that's one thing, too, that I really enjoyed because I had the opportunity to um, go to the, the prelude, the online one that you just hosted. Um, I did miss a couple, so I'm waiting for the, waiting for the recordings for the rest of them. But, uh, I did really appreciate that it was hosted like that. And we have the opportunity to go back to maybe see the ones that we missed, um, or even rewatch some of them because the information is so good, or we want to understand something a little better. Um, so speaking of the prelude, how do you think it went? Was it like a good precursor to what you have planned for the future? It go? I loved it. I had a really <laughs> good time. It was so, I think it went really amazing. Um, we had a really good group of speakers. Um, if you are somebody who was not able to attend the prelude, um, in a couple of months, we will have those videos available. Some of the videos will be available to the public. Um, we That was really a collaborative effort, not just on the part of the Between the Veils board, but also our presenters put in a lot of time and energy. Um, and we worked with uh, Reclaiming to open our ritual, to, to open the conference. They did, they did the opening ritual with us. And that's another thing is we want to be sort of like a coalition of other pagan organizations and other pagan traditions that we can all come together and, and host this organization and host our conferences together. I just, I had a blast. I, I can't tell you enough. Like I also missing the, the conference experience with the former Pantheacon and what will be between the veils in person very soon. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was really wonderful. I think it also, everybody did, um, we did our best in trying to create a community feel and um, allow people to engage with each other. I think that's the one thing that you just, it's really hard um, to try and recreate on an online event is um, getting to just, you know, see each other at the hotel lobby and, you know, the, the smells and tastes and all of those experiences. Um, so I think that 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 was kind of the the one challenge. Um, but outside of that, yeah, I think we were just really excited and it got us even more pumped um, for the future, so. Yeah, um, we also tried to recreate the, the hotel room suite vibe by having um, after parties on Zoom, which was 
like I was a little skeptical at first, but I had a really good time just like hanging out with people on Zoom and, and like Discord. Yeah. And yeah. just trying to talk to people and sharing and hearing what everyone has done and learned about. So, and you also had, oh, I forget what it's called, but it was a virtual, like a virtual fair where you could like have like, room. yeah, the vending room yeah. where you had the little, you got, you created your little character and walked around. Mm-hmm. And that was an interesting experience. I had never seen anything like that before. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was new to all of us. Um, our treasurer in particular spent, our treasurer and vice president spent a lot of time um putting that together and, and getting that going and getting that on. And, you know, it's all new technology. And so uh, there were definitely a few technological bumps here and there <laughs> along the way. Um, but it was really cool because you did, um, you got to create your own avatar and actually literally bump into each other. And as soon as you, you know, like walked close to somebody else um, in avatar form, you, their video popped up and you could start talking to them. And so we did actually have a lot of people um, even when we were just doing trial runs uh, for vendors, the vendors would like bump into each other and then just like hang out for a really long time. Um, so that was really wonderful uh, to be able to see an experience for sure. And, and new, um, definitely new for us too. Yeah. We also had some challenges in there and challenges. I mean, like games that um, participants could participate <laughs> in um, our treasurer nameless hid a bunch of like gold coins and golden if you found, apples golden apples excuse me if you found all the golden apples and you uh you won a prize That's and some so people cool. just like immediately went for it they were like i'm gonna and find all it. these apples and yeah. they did it like in the first like 15 minutes and we're like well and he almost was like i hid them really well um so it was just cool to see that kind of engagement though that like people were that engaged and wanted to be that engaged was really mm-hmm. awesome yeah yeah um i I wanted to ask too, in the prelude, um, there were a couple of presenters who opted not to have their presentation recorded. Um, Can you talk a little bit about that? Because for me, that was kind of different, Um, like not necessarily bad, but I was like, oh, okay, well, I need to make sure sure that I'm available specifically for this time so I can catch it. Um, Yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? I think some of that is has speaks to the fact that um, within this community previously, safe spaces have not been created, boundaries have not been um, respected, and appropriation is real. And so I, um, I think, you know, if you kind of take a look at which of the presentations or presenters declined, Mm -hmm. um, they uh, come from traditions that um, traditionally, um, are used in appropriative kind of manners. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think, um, you know, the, the kind of feedback that we got was not that we, not that they didn't trust BTV. And so often they've had recordings and books and writings and labor kind of be taken and profited off of um, in ways that they didn't feel were always consensual. And so there was a lot of discussion around kind of what that looks like. And, um, and so I think one of the things that we're doing is we're trying to really work on healing. Um, some of that, again, even though none of those experiences had been with BTV, they're just so ingrained in so many traditions experiences that mm-hmm. they just didn't feel comfortable. Um, so hopefully we can kind of continue to work on creating safe space and showing that we're safe space, but also never pressuring people or forcing people, especially of those traditions to feel like they have to Mm -hmm. record or they have to do anything to be a part of the community, right? Like we're, we're not going to also make those requirements um, of them. So hopefully, you know, all of us as a community, even outside of BTV start to do right by each other um, and start to create spaces where that's not an issue and people aren't afraid to have Mm -hmm. their presentations recorded. Um, But until then, come come see it live and um and they also all shared really wonderful resources um as well for people to be able to to look into so we'll make sure that we share kind of the resources that they recommend even if we can't share um the actual recordings that makes a lot of sense i thank you for explaining that because it kind of caught me off guard at first but i do come from 
I'm a white lady, you know? <laughs> so some of it is not something that I generally would normally think about, I guess, but, but it does make a lot of sense. So thank you for explaining that. Sure. And um, also just want to say that, um, and I think it would be totally fine with us saying that, you know, two of them were our um, presenters from Ireland um, that mm-hmm. were presenting on um, the appropriation and misunderstanding of Irish tradition. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, you know, it can be from, I think we also have stereotypes, especially in the US. I think about who feels like they've been, um, their traditions have been appropriated. And, you know, I think it's much broader than that as well. Um, so, which was a, a great reminder for us. And again, we all kind of have to be working together to create those spaces and do better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I really appreciate it. Um, so, look here. I think we've already talked about the future conferences. Um, I have a question for you. Okay. You went to the prelude. I um, did. You, I know you probably liked all of it, but were there <laughs> any things that you liked in particular or um, a presentation that you saw that really stood out to you? Um, so actually the one that I looked forward to the most was Laura's because oh. I'm an Irish pagan. Um, and that's, also one of the ones that was not recorded so I was like I need to make sure you know go away for an hour or whatever leave me alone so I can do this because I want to watch um but that was one of my favorite presentations I'm still waiting for some of the other recordings that I that I missed (laughs) um but I did really like the entire process of um, being on zoom and still being able to have that community aspect where I could listen to the presentation, but I could also sit and look through the chat and see what other people are saying and how we're all interacting together. Because I feel like I'm the type of person where if I have a thought, if I don't write it down, I'm going to forget it. Like I will forget. And nine times out of 10, it's something really important that I either wanted to ask about or um, just mention. So having the chat was good for me because if I'm in person, you know, I'd have a notebook and I'd write a bunch of stuff down because I wouldn't want to interrupt the the presentation by like talking to other people. So I really liked that part of it. Um, And then I think the one that I'm waiting for that I actually unfortunately missed was Starhawk's presentation because I just, I've never seen her speak. (laughs) And um, it's just, I missed it. So I'm I'm waiting honestly for everything else. I'm going to go back through and watch them all again. I'll probably sit down with my daughter and watch all of them all over again too. That's awesome. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of us, we, we were doing a lot of the, um, the moderating. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, so anytime I was moderating, I was like, oh, gosh, okay, like, I'm so happy I'm in this one. But that means I'm definitely going to miss the one that's next to it. Yeah. So we're also, um, I'm pretty excited to watch <laughs> all the ones that I unfortunately missed too. Yeah, Nika and I were <clears throat> messaging each other throughout the con, like, hey, which one are you moderating right now? What's going on? I want to be in that one. <laughs> like, and then, yeah, so we would just like give each other like, oh my gosh, this person. It was it was great for us in our, um, in our board Slack. We were like typing out really inspirational, wonderful things we were hearing from presenters to each other as like ways of also kind of reminding us of why the work was so important and also educating ourselves and feeling like, as a group leadership, we also needed to like take in a lot of what the gifts that the presenters were providing to the community. And so, yeah, it was a pretty, that that was fun for us too. And to be able to do that online is is a different experience. And you kind of can do that a little bit easier and more respectfully and kind of faster. So it was one of the benefits, I think, of having an online event for sure. Definitely. And I do have to say A plus (laughs) to your tech support during the con um, because I had come back for another one and my, my link just wasn't working. It was like, your access token is already in use. I'm like, oh no, like it's starting. (laughs) And we were able to get it situated and got everything taken care of super quick. And I didn't miss anything. So a plus, like I didn't have any issues. (laughs) Yeah. 
our tech, our tech team was pretty incredible. Um, and that's, you know, also something we want to let folks know is uh, the board is volunteer based. Um, and we also did make the decision to hire some, some staff um, because we believe in paying people for their labor as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that that's one of the benefits also of being a nonprofit and not um, doing it <clears throat> for us to make money. And the most, like the most amount of money as possible. It's also so we can pay really good tech support um, and tech support from our community to be able to to do that and be there and and also um, you know kind of give them what they're owed for 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 providing that to folks. So mm-hmm. which is not always common in the con world. Um, I think traditionally and you know different cons do it different ways, but there are definitely some that rely heavily on volunteer work. Um, to the point that it's detrimental to the folks doing a lot of labor. So just wanted to also shout out um, our staff people, like the, like the tech support that you experienced for being the backbone of this as well. And then, so with that too, um, you also pay your presenters, correct? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Cause um, I've heard mixed things about different cons and different um, events and stuff where the presenters aren't paid for their, you know, their labor, whether it be physical labor or the emotional labor of whatever they're talking about. So that I think is something that's even really important to me. So I, I like that you guys do that too. (laughs) Yeah. It's really common for like some of the presenters who are, you know, published authors might get compensated, but we believe that we need to compensate everyone fairly um, and equally when possible. We, that's that's something that we had been talking about very early on as an organization that we want to make sure everyone gets taken care of and paid for. And in particular, because we we want to lift up marginalized folks, uh, women and femmes, trans folks, queer folks, um, Black, Indigenous people of color, and who are often not compensated for their work or asked to work for free. We don't mm-hmm. want to do that. We want to make sure that everyone is taken care of. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then hopefully moving forward, once we start to be able to really break even um, and make some profit, the idea is, is that all of the additional profit that we make um, also will kind of be shared equally um, amongst presenters as well. So there's kind of the base pay and then what we make above that, um, we then will make sure it gets distributed amongst presenters and, and staff equally. That's so awesome. Um, so is there anything else? Did we miss anything? Is there anything else we want to talk about? Um, I just want to let folks know that if you're interested in um, BTV, um, what we're doing, um, the con, uh, any of the additional kind of resources that we offer, um, please check out, you know, our website, um, betweentheveils.org. Um, you can also check us out on Facebook. Our Facebook um, community group is really popping. Um, we also have a Discord. Um, so if you just check out um, Between the Veils on Discord, um, we should pop up there as well. And we have a fairly active community there. Um, and also feel free to email us at um, betweenthevalescon at gmail.com um, and send us any questions you have. If you feel like you have um, a skill set that you think could be really useful, if you think um, there are things that we're missing, again, we're a really new organization and we're um, all of us have experience in events and cons, but not this con. So if there's any recommendations you have, things that we could be doing differently, um, anything you want to express, please feel free to let us know. Um, we're always open to discussion. Awesome. And I'll make sure all of the links and everything will be in the description for anybody watching on YouTube. Um, and then in the show notes for anybody listening on the podcast. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and I was also going to ask, you kind of covered it a little bit. How mm-hmm. would one get involved with as either like a volunteer or whatever else you have available. Um, if that yeah. was some, if somebody was interested in that. 
So we have, so we've got a whole bunch of ways that people can get involved with us. We have our advisory committees um, that we are putting together, um, advisory committees to the board, people of color advisory committees, accessibility advisory committees, um, LG- conference. LGBTQ. The plus. LGBTQ plus advisory committee. So those are some ways that to get involved in, particularly in leadership and advising the board and making sure that we are doing our best um, to support the, our organization and support the community. Um, We, uh, so we're going to have a, uh, a form, a get involved form that we're going to share online. Um, If you are somebody who is interested in getting involved with volunteering at the con itself, we are going to start looking for volunteers for that very soon, probably in the next month or so. Um, We're going to be looking for folks who want to help with registration, help with putting stuff on the walls, um, help with um, leading people to events and to workshops. Um, there's all sorts of really cool stuff that we're doing and we want to yeah. grow and to serve all of you. Um, yeah. And then I would say also just, I don't know when this is going up, but um, as of today, June 25th, um, be on the lookout for exciting announcements specifically around where we will be hosting the con um, coming up pretty soon. President's Day weekend, by the way. I mean, it will be President's Day weekend, but the which where we will be in San Jose, we will be presenting, we will be announcing that pretty soon. Awesome. Um, well, if there is nothing else, I mean, we can go ahead and close it out here. Thank you so much for coming on and speaking with me and sharing your experience and what your organization is doing with the wider community. I know my audience is a lot smaller than a lot of other people's, but I am excited for everything that you're doing. I am hopeful that I will make it in February in person. (laughs) Um, And yeah, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. This is really great. Thank you. Awesome. And for everyone else, I guess we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Be sure to check the links in the description below for the website, any social media, maybe a mailing list. I will include all links in the show notes. And I really look forward to the work that Between the Veils is going to be doing in the future. And I encourage you to check out their work as well. Thank you so much to my patrons over on Patreon who make all of this possible. If you'd like to join me over on Patreon, you can do so for as little as a dollar a month and get patron-exclusive perks and content. Feel free to also join me over on Discord. The link for my Discord is in the description below. I also have a Facebook group that I'm working on being more active in. It's not as active as I would like it to be, but then again, I'm rarely on Facebook. So the links for all of those are in the description below, and I will talk to you all very soon.